So um, I'm Darren, I'll, I'm our head of account management and um, customer success here at HackerJob. I don't know if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Hi, yeah, I'm, I'm Rob. Uh, I work as a talent partner at Secret Escapes. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm uh, one of the customer success managers at HackerJob. Cool, and I guess while we wait for the, um, the participants to, uh, to increase, we'll give it a couple of minutes before we kick off the, the full session. So I guess the big question, the elephant in the room is, uh, how are we finding the situation at the moment? <laughs> yeah. Um, Weird one, isn't it? Ben, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'm about to say the most exciting thing that's happened so far for me is the announcement of Bundesliga <laughs> going live again. That's uh, <laughs> adding a pep to my step. <laughs> yeah, I think I've missed football so much. That is one thing that I haven't missed at all, actually. I've really <laughs> <watched it much. laughs> uh, I just missed human contact and being around other, other people. And I think for the first for the first week of lockdown, I was saying to Ben earlier on about this, but um, the first week of lockdown was a real shock to the system. Yeah. And, yeah. and I started to I started to normalise after that and started to quite enjoy having my own space and being able to get get through some of the admin that I wouldn't ordinarily be able to get through at work. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, it gets the last week or so has been more difficult again. It's coming and going in waves. Um, yeah. yeah. I've definitely. Uh, so Sorry, I've Daniel. definitely found the same. Um, I think, Nick, I think you, Darren, you know me around the office and stuff like that. And I'm sure um, a lot of people, other people will vouch for it as well. But I'm, I'm generally quite a, a people person and I'm, I'm, I'm quite like, I bounce off other people's energy in the room. Um, so it's quite hard having to shift that from kind of having to be my own energy almost. Um, so that, that was initially kind of difficult, but you, you find ways to kind of, keeping yourself motivated and keeping yourself kind of working don't you yeah i think you need to keep some sort of routine and not beat yourself up too much if you're not achieving what you thought you would if you had this time so i remember we had, we had so many conversations in the office about um you know if you had an extra hour a day what would you do with it and, and some people said oh, i'd go to the gym i'd learn a new language i'd learn an instrument and you get way more than an extra hour a day uh, off the back of this and I don't think anyone's achieving anywhere near as much as they thought they would and as a result we're feeling quite guilty um, about about not doing that but I think uh, getting out of bed having a shower and having some kind of routine is is, is good enough and I, people are a bit hard on themselves I think yeah I, I definitely found myself being um, more productive in some ways as well though I think usually tasks that would take me slightly longer I can because I probably wasn't getting distracted or finding distractions um, I, I, I definitely found myself just cracking on with things and getting tasks done and then you get to the end of the day and you go actually I've done everything I was supposed to kind of do and now I've got more time and then you're like okay cool let me find a project or something that I can try and use um use this time to do yeah i, I agree I, I think that um i walked into this thinking oh i'll learn a new language or i'll uh, get super fit and uh i don't know how many people saw it but there was a lot of chat about uh, like 5k runs uh all my friends dropped this into into our various whatsapp groups during the first couple of weeks uh i think i did one two and a half and was going to build myself up and then i stopped uh my <laughs> my partner today did 12k and uh, I think that's more than I've walked the entire time. This has been going on for seven weeks. So, uh... yeah. I, I said the same thing to myself, Daz. I said before all of this, but at the end of lockdown, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. Yeah. Um, I think I've done a grand total of about four kilometres and about three press-ups. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I've actually put on about half a stone since I've been in lockdown. Oh, it's, yeah. it's hard not to snack. It is hard really? not to snack. Um, I usually work about a meter away from the fridge as well. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I um, because we've been doing so many webinars here at Hacker Job. I actually had, you know, those um, those dippy scoopy little eggs that you can get, like those dairy milk ones. <laughs> I had two of those for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's example. my lunch day. Yeah, mm, I had two nutritious. of those plus a um, plus a glass of milk. So uh, very nutritional. Um, <laughs> I think if we, if we kick off, there'll probably be some questions um, as we go along, though. We, yeah. we kind of covered the first bit, kind of few bits, but I, I guess that if we, for, we've had three or four more people join since we started. So 
Uh, in the room, you've got Darren, who's head of account management and customer success. You've got Ben, who's one of the customer success managers here at Hackjob. Then you've got Rob, who's a uh, talent partner at, at Secret Escapes. Cool, guys. Um, so I guess, Rob, on your side, for anyone that doesn't know a lot about Secret Escapes, can you just explain what you guys do as a business? Yeah, so um, Secret Escapes is an e-commerce business in the travel space. Um, and we offer heavily discounted rates on accommodation and package holidays. Um, so I think the thing that there's, there's three key things that really differentiate Secret Escapes from other travel companies. Um, the first one is that we're a members only site. Uh, the second is that we focus solely on luxury travel. Um, previously, it was actually four and five star hotel only. We do some three star hotels now and package holidays, but they have to fall under quite a, a certain criteria. Um, and then the third and final thing is that we, we operate on a flash sales environment, or well, the majority of the business operates on a flash sales environment. So um, those deals are live on the site for, for two or three weeks, and then they're, re, then they're cycled with newer, fresher deals. Yeah. Now, how long have you been at Secret Escapes? So I've been there for two years now. Yeah, two years in June. Yeah. Flies by. Yeah, I didn't expect to be in lockdown yeah, two years ago <laughs> on my on my two year anniversary. But, uh, I think it, will be. it really yeah, has flown cool. by. Like, that, how long have you been at Hacker Job now, Ben? Because you 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 two have worked together for a long time, and I've always been the outsider in this relationship. <laughs> I will keep it that way. No, um, so I've, I've been at Hacker Job two years now as well. So um, it was two years at the start of April. Nice. So, so I, think, I, I, sorry, Ben. No, go on. So I, I guess on, on your side then, Rob, like we said at the start, the, the elephant in the room right now is, is COVID. So how has that affected um, hiring at, at Secret Escapes? And I guess what changes have you made since, um, since it all kicked off? from a personal perspective or more of a business uh, more, more from business but then we can loop it back to, to personal as well um i think so from a, from a business perspective the the obvious things um so we started by going on a partial recruitment freeze um which meant that we were only hiring business critical roles so we we, we gave uh, the hiring managers an opportunity to put a business case forward on why they thought their roles were business critical um, and then that was evaluated by the senior leadership team and the owners of, of the business. Um, and then we were, we were given back a, a heavily reduced number of roles that we were, we were able to work on. Um, a lot of those have been filled now. So there aren't really a, a huge number of roles that we're currently working on. And I think part of that is because we don't necessarily have the need. We're not, we're not selling many holidays at the moment. People aren't able to go away. Um, and I think the other part of that is to keep things fair amongst the teams as well because some of our team are furloughed, some of the team are on reduced working hours. Um, and if we were then seen to hire people into the business when we're reducing salaries for loyal employees, you know, that wouldn't necessarily land particularly well. Um, so a lot of our hiring is on freeze. Um, and then as far as attrition goes, that's, that's done on a case by case basis. So if the hiring manager feels that they do need that individual in their team and it's actually business critical, um, then they can, they can put a case forward. But, um, hiring's been reduced massively and any hires that we have made have all been done uh, online so they've all been via hangout so we had to put guides together sort of virtual hiring guides for managers and things like that so that they could get a better understanding on on sort of um, interview etiquette from home yeah I guess yeah. Like, how did you I'm, I'm sure Darren's gonna ask this anyway but was that was that a difficult shift from obviously usually doing finals that are face to face and having a lot of kind of that personal contact with candidates uh, to, to suddenly everything being online and kind of virtual yeah it is weird and I think one of our one of ourselves as well are the people uh, that they're meeting you don't really get a full understanding or sense of an individual over hangouts or zoom conversations and our office is really cool as well so one of the great things that we love to do with candidates that, that we're looking to, to make offers to is show them around the office and show them what sort of environment I'll be working in and give them a sense of what it will be like on day one. But that's really it's impossible to do at this stage. Um, we've got a couple of office run through videos and things like that that we've sent out to candidates, but it's not the same as actually being there and getting a sense for your work environment, which I think is super important. Um, so it's something that we just had to explain as best we can. Um, and then hiring managers, we've got some really experienced hiring managers at Secret Escapes and some very inexperienced hiring managers at Secret Escapes. So 
um, more on a case by case basis, really, in terms of which hiring managers need more support um, yeah. in order to interview and recruit from home. Yeah, I think it's um, uh, you kind of hit the nail on the head that it's changed the way that any, everyone's recruiting right now. So um, I think that if you said to us seven, eight weeks ago that all recruitment that is happening in the UK right now will be will be fully remote, I think I would have questioned it. I remember doing a webinar when this was all starting to happen and saying to the person on the webinar, yeah, but it probably won't change a lot. It would just mean that you won't be able to interview in your office. You'll probably interview by cafes. And then within two or three days, <laughs> everything was fully remote. Uh, and I know that on, at least on my side, it was a shock to the system because I don't have an office chair at home. I don't have a, uh, a, a table. Um, so I guess that with hiring managers, you, you also need to bear in mind where you're sitting while doing these as well, because they yeah. can be quite consuming uh, interviews. Plus, if you're also doing some kind of dual coding or, or um, pair programming or something like that, it makes it even more pivotal that you have a, the right working environment. Yeah, we, we actually put, um, so we were, we were looking for a, a lead Salesforce engineer in the business that we hired uh, a, week, a week or so ago. Um, and that was one of the core challenges. Normally there would be some sort of um, task on site. So we had to put a lot more emphasis on, on a take home task and really go through that task in a lot more detail than we ordinarily would, um, knowing that we'd have a, a task that they could, they could complete in front of us. Um, so from a tech perspective, yeah, the hiring is, is difficult. Dealing with whiteboard exercises and paired programming is a completely different beast yeah. um, on Hangouts or Zoom calls than it, than it would be face to face. And um, obviously culture is so important for us as well. Definitely. And, and, and from, from our perspective, we, we want to make sure that the people we're hiring into the business are the right sort of cultural fit. Um, so that's something that we need to bear in mind because people quite often don't give their best on, on video chats like this um, and it is it, you know interviews are contrived situations anyway but to do yeah, yeah. to do it in this in this weird uh time that we're going through at the moment um and over and over video calls isn't necessarily the easiest thing for some people um so we have to bear that in mind yeah i think it's absolutely kind of not just hiring managers but candidates as well we found um from our teams talking to candidates is just getting them to kind of shift that mentality a little bit around okay this is something that now is going to be happening so uh you do have to still put your best foot forward you still have to do all the required and necessary kind of prep and and, and so forth so it's just really shifting it from okay you're going to be meeting people face to face to you're still meeting people but everything else around you is going to kind of um contribute to that impression that you're going to make and and, and kind of helping them prep that stuff yeah, we, we took more of, um, with some candidates, more of a, a kind of agency stance. So I remember when I worked agency side, we'd always call the candidates before yeah. face-to-face interview, let them know what they can expect and, and what the hiring managers are like and what they like and dislike and give them a bit of advice and stuff. And we took more of an approach like that with candidates um, during these really strange times that we're going through um, by letting them know that we are aware that it is an unusual circumstance we'd love to have them in the office but can't for obvious reasons and that um, we're not expecting them to to truly give their best it will be taken into into consideration um because it's difficult some people just do not like sitting in front of a camera and having a conversation like this and would be far more relaxed face to face so i have to kind of bear that in mind a bit as well but i guess like this whole, this whole, sorry this whole situation is is alien to everyone it's not something that you you do regularly unless you've got family that are quite far and, and they're abroad and stuff like that where you do video calls um quite regularly so um i think initially the yeah the whole kind of situation is quite was alien to a lot of people yeah well i think you can tell on this uh on the this call that we're because because of latency issues a bit of lag like we're kind of going across each other as well so a lot of face-to-face uh final interviews they tend to have quite a lot of um quite a lot of people in there, usually two or three people that will be interacting in that face-to-face interview, which makes it more more difficult on that side as well. Yeah, it does. I do have a feeling that when we get back to the office, all of this will have played a pivotal role in letting people speak because you have to pay so much attention to it when you're in a group chat like this. Totally. Make sure that you're not saying anything and overlapping so that people interject because you can't hear anything. But I think when we do get back into meetings at the office, people are going to be really respectful of people's sort of verbal space, if you like. So I think it, might, it might be one of the positives that come out of it. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, th there's been a, a really good question in the uh, in the in the Q and A. Um, for I guess all, all three of us, do do you find candidates more risk averse? Has this changed anything in terms of your process? So I I can take that if we uh, if we if you guys want to think about that. Like I I think that at the moment candidates are more risk averse when they can't understand what's gonna what's gonna happen in in their environment. So I think that the more companies can, can give some transparency about what's going on in their business, the better. Because I, I think that the worst thing you can do right now is is say everything's kind of hunky dory and like it's the same as it was before. Because we're in a new norm now. Like what what was um what was the case eight weeks ago isn't the case now. And I think that we'll get on to it a little bit later. But I think that the environment that we're we'd be looking at when we come out of this won't be the same environment that we walked into this in. Yeah, I think it depends on the, the candidate situation as well. Because if a candidate has been, um, you know, furloughed on a high salary role in their current company, um, and then they've found alternate opportunities where they're going to be working 100% of the time, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a no brainer for some of those people to want to make the move. Um, equally, there aren't anywhere near as many opportunities out there at the moment because so many companies have gone on a recruitment freeze that some are probably sitting back and thinking, you know, is this, is this the best time to start looking? So I do think it depends on individual circumstance. Um, I think, the, I think the, the risk wariness comes from the fact that they could, they could branch off into, into a new role and have that offer rescinded. We had a number of, of uh, people who... Um, went through that ordinary attrition cycle in, in Secret Escapes, who had left the business um, under good terms and they'd found another role elsewhere. And then that role, uh, role offer was rescinded because of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, and we've had candidates coming back to us saying, look, can we, can we rejoin Secret Escapes? So I think that's probably one of the reasons that, that candidates are more uh, sort of risk cautious um, because there's been a lot of circumstances that I've heard of at least where offers have been rescinded because of the crisis. Yeah, um, I absolutely agree. I think it, it definitely has uh, and does depend on the candidate situation. Um, those that have been furloughed or unfortunately made redundant, um, it, it, it does leave you in a situation where uh, you, you do review your options. Um, so, and, and I think we have seen a lot more people go live on hacker job platform um, during this kind of COVID-19 um, situation where they've been naturally have more time at home to to kind of take interviews and not having to take an hour and do a commute um, to an interview and stuff like that. So it's been easier in a sense for candidates to um, uh, to, to put their um, uh, themselves out there. But absolutely, there is that kind of apprehension sometimes um, where they do question in terms of the validity almost sometimes of um, some processes and things like that. And it's about educating and giving is almost over communicating and over sharing um, certain information so that actually they see that as Darren was saying, um, processes are transparent and uh, companies that are hiring still are genuinely hiring and genuinely looking for amazing people to join their businesses. Yeah, no, I yeah, think, yeah. Um, yeah, I think another thing that I've I've spoken to a lot of clients when doing some kind of education piece around what's going on at the moment is I think that historically, for one reason or another, companies have never been keen on speaking to candidates if they have uh, a, a background where they've moved from role to role. Whereas I think that in this situation, companies need to probably bear in mind that a lot of people aren't looking to leave because of circumstances in their own uh, in their own hands. They're looking to to move because of something that is completely unexpected. So I think that I, I'm always advising clients to look more at someone's background if that's a, a problem for you, rather than looking at current roles. Yeah, cool. I, think, I think candidates need to be reassured as well. Um, and, that's, and that's really down to the talent partner, whoever's actually in charge of that role, making sure that the sign off has come right from the top, because of course, hiring managers will always tell you that their role is the most important role <laughs> and that it's business critical and all the rest of it. But um, something that we were really conscious of is making sure that it was signed off by the business owners, um, Alex and Tom, uh, before it went any further, before the role actually 
and before we started headhunting for the role. We don't want to waste our own time as well, obviously. Um, we don't want to waste the time of the candidate either um, or of the hiring managers. So yeah, that was something we were really conscious of in making sure that it was um, signed off before we, before we started working it. Did you find that that gave you a little bit of like extra gusto to go after these people because you just you know they're absolutely business critical roles they've gone through a sign like a, a longer sign off process than usual the hiring managers are absolutely bought in because they've had to put this kind of this process in to, to, to kind of get their role signed off so um, did, did you find that gave you a bit more kind of onus to absolutely go for that role? Yeah, I think so. I mean, a combination of things really. Having more time on your hands enables you to really laser focus on some of these hard to fill roles. Um, the fact that candidates that are interested are really, really interested um, as well because of their because of their situations, and, and you know that you're not kind of wasting time um, with people that are sort of just putting the feelers out in the market. Um, and the fact that the business owners know that you're working that role is quite a good incentive to make sure that, that, that you get it fill, filled. Um, you know, we're used to working on sort of anywhere up to 20 roles at a time as a talent partner at Secret Escapes. But when you've only got a handful of roles, you, you know, you're, you're expected to, to fill them. And rightly so, you should, you should be filling those roles. So, um, yeah, there is that. But I think, yeah, quite a lot of um, incentive when you know that the business owners are aware of exactly what it is that you're working on. <laughs> So, so I guess what what do we all foresee happening in the uh, in the world post COVID from a recruitment perspective? I think that's going to vary a lot from from business to business. Um, I think the the travel market is in a really unique position in that you know people aren't buying holidays um, at, at the moment. People aren't um, able to travel, so you know the the sales just aren't there. Um, so I think I think travel will operate slightly differently in the bounce back than than other industries. I think, but yeah, I, I think it will depend massively from business to business. So I think depending on the impact COVID nineteen has had on them and and how quickly they start to recover afterwards as well. Um, I think when businesses are in a position to hire again, though, I think there's likely to be a massive backlog of vacancies for internal recruiters to be. Uh, to be working on so the prioritization piece is going to be really important um, you know we can only work on so many roles at any given time so yeah. when all of a sudden they, they pull that lift on hiring and say right you know um, execs are, are open to hiring the roles that they need all of a sudden there are going to be more roles than we know how to deal with so I think the prioritization piece making the business aware that we are going to have to prioritize roles that are business critical first because we can't um, focus our attention on all of them at once without actually, um, you know, damaging the candidate experience or, or the process itself. So um, I think it'd be about working with stakeholders really closely to identify which really are business priorities and then making sure that we work those roles first. But I think some companies are going to have an enormous backlog um, and when the lift does come and businesses are recovering and all of a sudden they need these people in yesterday. Um, it's going to be about working with those stakeholders to prioritise, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, I was going to say, I think you, you touched on candidate experience there. And I almost feel like candidate experience, like it was, it's always been the massive and important part of um, hiring processes. But I think post COVID, it's probably going to be um, even more important than ever. Um, I think we've seen candidates being quite wary and quite cautious and um uh, right now and i think i don't think there is going to be this big all of a sudden yes loads of people loads of people available loads of candidates i think there will be a uh a, a, a still an apprehension um about kind of people changing roles about what the business is future proof and, 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 and given um, lots of information about how they are trying to future proof um, their company for situations like this in, um, uh, later on. And I think the, the companies that are planning now for that um, will be uh, the, the companies that kind of do make um, that initial step and, and, and kind of hit the ground running um, once, once things are back to normal, I guess. <laughs> You mentioned like a wariness from the candidates. I think wariness from a business perspective as well. And like I said earlier, I think it would depend 
on 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 uh, you know from business to business they'll all be in completely different circumstances they'll bounce back at completely different rates but i think there will be a, a business wariness there especially if we do if uh, if the if the laws do start relaxing um in terms of the social distance inside of things if i were a business owner i'd certainly be worried about a second spike so i wouldn't be jumping the gun um with, with any of that kind of stuff um but yeah i think it will it will vary a lot across uh, you know industry to industry business to business yeah i think especially in london like the the what's going to happen after this is going to be incredibly interesting because it's all well and good saying when you're in the office you can um have uh, two meters uh distance between one to another from a social perspective but you can't operate that on a on a tfl perspective like once you're going on the underground or the overground like, i know when i i went in during the first week of of lockdown to get bits and pieces from the office to bring to make my life at home a little bit easier and there was there wasn't that social distancing at that point so when this is all lifted there's no chance that that's going to be the case so it's um it's going to be interesting to see what companies do around that stuff yeah uh and, and then, then there's another question on um on what has uh give me one second to pull that back um so what's been some of the things that we've done uh from a uh, unproductive perspective during lockdown what have we done to get around uh i guess boredom during this situation all the cliche stuff uh banana bread has been a big one for me <laughs> I've okay to, i've made a lot of banana bread i've started to start to master that so yeah the banana bread thing i've been trying to learn a bit of spanish um but that is quite a productive thing i suppose um yeah binging on on netflix series is definitely one of them and and also other other series as well that ordinarily i would consider quite mind numbing but have absolutely <laughs> loved during the lockdown um so, yeah. you've rewatched love island haven't you <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i haven't watched love island but i have started watching a program called 90 day fiance which is absolute <laughs> trash but i've been obsessed with it um and yeah, various other bits and pieces. The Last Kingdom as well, a bit of like a Game of Thrones type yeah, series. Yeah, kind of the Last Kingdom. Enjoyed that though. Um, but yeah, I've been spending a lot of time uh, watching watching TV and, and baking things that are just going to make me continue to put on weight. But one of the main things. <laughs> ben, um, I've I've been quite fortunate that I've got like a um, a communal garden area. Um, so I've. I've spent a lot of time out there and I think the guys internally have seen me take calls and meetings and stuff um, out there. Um, and the moments where I have found myself and I've got like an extra hour um, where I pro I've, I've tried to use it to do my admin, but we've got a great Slack channel called Water Cooler, um, <laughs> where it's basically a, a constant kind of Google uh, Hangouts or Google Meets that's running and people can jump in at any time and just jump on and have a chat uh, while they do certain work and, and jump off again. Um, so I've, I've found that while it's unproductive, it's also been really productive for me to have people to talk to like I would do in the office um, while I'm cracking on with like certain admin tasks. So that was really useful. But yeah, lots of cooking for me. Um, I enjoy cooking, but I've always gone, I don't have time to cook. <laughs> I've had a lot, of more, a lot more time on my hands now. Yeah. I feel really bad. My um, unpredictable stuff has been football manager. So I've improved my management ability, um, <laughs> but like probably not on the right thing. I, 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 I think last week I said on this call that I've done 176 hours. I checked it before the call today and I've done, now done 202. So <laughs> I'm averaging. Oh, that is sickening. That is sickening. Yeah. I wouldn't want to know. I wouldn't want to know that. Yeah. So uh, I'm about nine seasons in now. So it's, uh, it's it's going deep into it. So I know what the future looks like if people want to ask about the future. <laughs> uh, I spent a lot of time there. Um, and and then I guess what what have I if if you could look back on uh, on this last eight weeks and you could give your yourself a bit of advice about what you should do, whether it's productive, non-productive, things that would have made your life a little bit easier. What would you advise yourself with? so easy in hindsight to say that you're going to make better use of your time isn't it but i don't think <laughs> yeah. when, it, when it comes to the crunch i think uh we're all human beings at the end of the day um and i think as long as you're getting out of bed you're showering you've got some sort of structural routine to your day and you're doing your bit by social distancing then 
you should feel pretty good about yourself because I don't know many people that have come into this and learned a new language or learned a new instrument or, or any of that kind of stuff. And I think we give ourselves a bit of a hard time because we could have achieved so much uh, in that time, of course we could have. But um, I think realistically, this is a really unusual time for everybody. Uh, yeah. Everyone's adapting to this. I think it has a massive impact on uh, mental health as well. Um, we're social creatures, the majority of us, and we like to spend time with each other and be tactile with each other and, um, you know, just be, be in each other's company. And so all of a sudden, uh, out of the blue, to be in, in lockdown um, for what's been, what, nearly two, two months now is yeah. completely alien to a lot of people, especially those who I really feel for who are living at, living at home on their own and without partners or friends and everything else because um, although we've got, you know, video chats and we've got the telephone and we've got the internet and all the rest of it, nothing quite compares to having a chat with someone face to face. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I think I would tell myself, don't beat yourself up too much if you're not being super productive. If you're doing the basics and you've got some level of, of routine and, you know, um, then you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty well. Yeah. Ben? I think from my perspective, the big thing um, that I would absolutely make sure I do again and potentially do more of is checking on people. Um, absolutely checking on people. I think um, it's quite nice to just get a call out of the blue, especially during this. Um, we're all, as we said, probably got a little bit more time on our hands um, and having a, a chat, just someone asking you how your day's going, how, how you're doing is, um, is really valuable. Um, so I think that would be absolutely one thing I would do um, still and do more of um, as well if I had to do this uh, that time again. Cool, fine. Um, so I know we we ended we intended for this session to be about half an hour. Um, I don't know if there's any uh, salient points that anyone wants to uh, to jump into right at the end of the end of the session. No, I think it's been no? quite nice. Yeah, do you know what? It's been quite nice to just sit here and chat with you guys um i know we've had a lot of these chats already uh rob and, and stuff like that but um yeah i think I've, I've become much more kind of comfortable in this <laughs> in this kind of scenario um due to covid so yeah it's been nice yeah it has been i'll tell you what i've, I've been the same i i think um i've actually spoken to my parents way more than than i than i did before all of this started and for, for like I've built quite a nice bond with, with my family that was there already, but we'd, we'd maybe see each other once every two, three weeks. Um, but we've been on the phone together every single day. Um, and regardless of the fact that the conversation tends to go down the same sort of route, what have you been up to today? Well, spent some time in the kitchen and then I actually uh, went into the, ventured into the garden. And it's, been, it's been nice just keeping in touch uh, with, with friends and family. Um, on a, on a bit of a deeper level than you ordinarily would. It's not just someone to go for a beer with. You're actually just checking in on people and making sure they're all right. So yeah, in, in terms of your point there, Ben, you're definitely right. I think we need to just make sure um, that our loved ones are doing okay because uh, yeah, everyone deals with this kind of thing in different ways. Some people are absolutely loving it. Some people are really struggling um, and it's not always easy to identify. So yeah, it's, it's good to be, it's good to be good. Yeah, I heard, um, I just on that point of talking to parents and family every day, I was chatting to my mum and my niece uh, yesterday, and uh, they were talking about how they went and fed the ducks, and that seemed, seemed like an absolute adventure to me. I was like, that's kind of like Mordor. Like, <laughs> go, see, seeing ducks right now just seems like a long off place. I, I look out onto a common every day, and I haven't seen an animal in weeks. So, uh, <laughs> but it seems uh, like an incredible place. But thanks so much for your time, uh, Rob. Thanks for your time, Ben. Um, if anyone's got any questions following this, because I appreciate we're going to put this out onto uh, other channels. So if anyone's got any questions for Rob, Ben, or myself afterwards, feel free to shoot them across and we can get them answered uh, on the various channels. Awesome. Thanks, guys. That's, cheers, Ben. Bye.